Hey guys, it's Dylan. So quick clarification on that 9,000 ton gigapress. This one in particular is seemingly not for Tesla. So I am sorry for the confusion and misleading any of you. After I uploaded that video, I did see this tweet from Ava where she said that this one in particular was signed by the Ruili group. So has nothing to do with Tesla, but I won't be surprised if sometime in the future, Tesla does end up having one of these 9K ton machines, but for now, it's not this one. Sticking with news from Ava, we may get some updated timelines on Model S deliveries in the next week. Basically, there was one tweet from a customer who got some more information in an email from Tesla, but the process of scheduling delivery dates should begin soon. And the email said, due to the high volume of Model S orders Tesla has right now, we don't have an estimated delivery date, but that should change within the next week. And this was from Hudster2 on Twitter who shared the Tesla delivery email. But going to Tesla's website, the Plaid Plus delivery dates are still estimated to be mid-2022. The Plaid is August to September, and the long range is September to October. So we'll keep an eye out for this over the next week to see if anything changes. And so this is a good one. You know how all of the bears have been saying that these Tesla credits are gonna go away, and it's not a fundamental part of Tesla's business, and it's inflating all of their profit numbers well. This news in particular may lead to those credits being somewhat of a sustainable part of Tesla's business. Once again, not forever, but for a much longer time than we had previously thought. From Reuters, Tesla seeks entry into the US renewable fuel credit market, which by the way, is a multi-billion dollar US industry. Tesla is one of at least eight companies with a pending application at the EPA tied to power generation and renewable credits. The Biden administration is expected to review the EPA applications and lay out how EVs could qualify for tradable credits under the RFS this summer, the renewable fuel standard. However, it is likely to anger some in the US refining industry who would need to buy these credits called RINs generated by Tesla and other companies, essentially subsidizing an electric car company that seeks to put these petrochemical refiners out of business. Electricity from biogas, mainly pooled from the nation's landfills, is already eligible for generating credits under the RFS program, but the EPA has never approved applications because the agency hasn't yet figured out logistical issues. And under the RFS, refiners must blend biofuels like corn-based ethanol into their fuel pool or purchase compliance credits in a credit market where prices have swung wildly in recent years. And Tesla would generate the most lucrative type of credits known as D3s, which trade at a significant premium to the larger pool of traditional ethanol credits. And from McKinsey Energy Insights, these D3 credits are RINs generated by blending ethanol made from cellulosic material into gasoline. Due to the lack of enough cellulosic biofuel, the EPA is able to sell credits to the industry to satisfy this RIN obligation. And no, this is not a done deal. As you can see, this is a pending application and there's a lot of detail that still needs to be worked out as to how this would actually work, but it's definitely something to watch in the coming weeks and months because if this all goes through, this would be a huge help to Tesla's profitability. Not that they need it, but of course it would be good. At the same time though, it would lead to more FUD when it comes to the credit situation because it's would be another avenue for Tesla to earn a different type of credit where people are going to complain that it's not fundamental to Tesla's business. So we'll see how all of this shakes out. So getting into FSD, Gary tweets, how about that FSD V9 beta expansion and subscription tagging Elon? That's what we're all waiting for. Elon replied, May 12th, 645 AM, subscription rolls out in about one month. So let's remember with this latest subscription timeline update that puts us at about mid April. So let's cross our fingers and hope for the best. But there's more in response to that same tweet, Elon said, we had to focus on removing radar and confirming safety. That release goes out next week to US production. Then a week or two to polish pure vision FSD and V9 beta will release. Difference between V8 and V9 is gigantic. So we have a first iteration going out next week and then another week or two after that, the V9 beta should release. Neural Net Neil asks, any details on the V9 beta expansion? Is it still going to be people selected by Tesla who have applied? Elon responds, I think we're maybe a month or two away from wide beta, but these things are hard to predict accurately. <laughs> Yes, they are. The work we had to do for pure vision driving was needed for FSD. So much more progress has been made than it would seem. And so my takeaway from all of this is that a big part of the delays in both FSD and even the Model S and X Plaid has been removing the radar and moving to pure vision. 
It's a big change and that is a big reason why a lot of this has been pushed back. But there's one other interesting thing when it comes to the timeline here. The subscription, Elon says, should roll out in about a month, so mid-April. But then he also says, I think we're maybe a month or two away from wide beta. So the subscription might roll out before the wider release of the FSD beta, which I think is interesting. And yes, this tweet thread was all the same day and the same time. But I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this. Are we actually gonna see these timelines come to fruition or will it be pushed back? And honestly, I would really like to hear what you think the price of the full self-driving subscription will be. Let me know your best guess down below. Now, shifting gears to Bitcoin, but first I need you guys to know two quick things. I am not just some guy who read a few articles and saw Tom Brady put laser eyes on himself and now I'm like, yeah, Bitcoin, let's do this. I'm gonna start talking about it. Last summer, I fell completely down the rabbit hole of Bitcoin and crypto. So I easily have over 500 hours and probably closer to a thousand hours spent researching the space, reading, watching, listening, all of the things. But no, I am not by any stretch of the imagination trying to claim that I am some sort of expert because I am not. And like with most things, the more you learn about a topic, the more you can actually realize that you really don't know. So. Keep all of that in mind. I just love to learn and read and research and that's what I've been spending a huge portion of my time doing over the last year. And this is such an important technology to the future of humanity and Tesla. And to those of you who are still skeptics, I would just encourage you to please try to keep an open mind over the next few weeks, stick around, hear me out, try to hear what people are saying in the space. Bitcoin is the most revolutionary technology I have ever seen in my life. And once again, no, I'm not an expert, but in 2012, I did see Tesla for exactly what it was going to be. And there have only been two things in my entire life that I have been so genuinely excited for when it comes to technology and disruption, and it has been Tesla and blockchain. And the last thing I'll say, this is the greatest wealth transfer opportunity of our entire entire lifetimes in my humble opinion, not financial advice, but I just encourage you to keep an open mind and try to learn about the space because it's not just digital gold. It's not just a digital currency. It is so much more than that. If you just stay tuned, you might be able to understand why. So what is the Bitcoin Taproot Network upgrade? Simply put, this is the first major protocol change since 2017, so it's been four years. While this upgrade is going to lead to incremental changes in privacy, scalability, and potentially lower fees on the Bitcoin blockchain, this is a vital topic because today, the Bitcoin developers, miners, and those at the forefront of this technology are deciding and debating how to implement future changes to the protocol to avoid what happened in 2017. Four years ago, a proposed change to the Bitcoin software led to what we now know as the block wars. If you'd like to learn more, there's a good book called The Block Size War by Jonathan Beer. The cliff notes is the debate over the future size of each block, which led to a civil war and it was a nightmare. That's why many of the developers and miners have PTSD today when it comes to updating Bitcoin, the decentralized network with no central authority or communication channel. But the good news is after months of back and forth, it seems as though the network has settled on a future proof, secure and fair way to implement changes, which I'll get to shortly. But first, Bitcoin Taproot. Taproot is a soft fork, which means it's an upgrade, and no, this will not be creating a new incompatible spin-off blockchain. That can happen with a controversial hard fork, but more on that topic another day. Soft forks, on the other hand, are backwards compatible, meaning upgraded nodes, just think computers, with the new rules, just think the protocol, can mine blocks, and the non-upgraded nodes can also still mine blocks, so long as they don't break the new protocol rules. And privacy and scaling go hand in hand. By achieving more privacy with each Bitcoin transaction, you remove data from the ledger, meaning there is less metadata to analyze. This is also how you scale by compressing data and becoming more space efficient with transactions, making each byte on the ledger more economically dense. And no, Taproot won't turn Bitcoin into a privacy behemoth like Zcash or Monero, but it's a careful, calculated step in the right direction. On the Bitcoin blockchain right now, you can tell what type of transaction is taking place by reading the on-chain data. 
so you or I can detect if transactions are using more complex functions like time lock releases or multi-signature requirements. A time lock is a type of smart contract that restricts the spending of some Bitcoin until a specified future time or block height and can be used to lock up Bitcoin held as an investment for a period of months or years. A multi-signature or multi-sig requires multiple private keys to authorize a Bitcoin transaction rather than a single signature from one key. For example, if I wanted to open a Bitcoin savings account with Ashley, I could require that both of our digital signatures are required to spend the funds, preventing her from buying new shoes without my approval. Or a similar situation but for a child where the child needs the parent's digital signatures before a transaction is approved. There are many other more complex transactions made possible with Bitcoin, but this is sufficient for now. What Taproot will do is cloak these complex transactions, making all of them look like it was a simple one signature transaction. Multi-sig transactions will be indistinguishable from normal transfers. Lightning Network and smart transactions will also look like a simple peer-to-peer -peer transaction on blockchain explorers. Of course, a big win for privacy advocates. This is going to be implemented with Schnorr signatures and will replace the current signature algorithm ECDSA, otherwise known as elliptic curves. All you need to know here is that this new algorithm, Schnorr if you stumble across it, will lead to more privacy, more flexibility with more advanced transactions, and faster network speeds by using batch validation. And one of the more exciting features would be setting the stage for advanced functionality in the future, meaning more advanced contracts can be used on the network, opening up a lot of possibilities. And practically speaking, it could lead to 2.5 times faster block validation and multi-sig transactions costing the same amount to validate as single signatures. Schnorr signatures are essentially better in every way than the current ECDSA system. Now, Bitcoin Taproot is still a proposal, but there is wide approval and desire for this upgrade, and the expectation is that the 90% voting threshold by the miners will be met sometime before the deadline, which is August 11th. It's estimated that Bitcoin Taproot will go live in November this year as long as the 90% acceptance threshold is met. And yes, this has been in the works for years, which highlights the slow to change feature of Bitcoin. Yes, I said feature. This is exactly what we need for Bitcoin to maintain its strength and dominance, slow, methodical, thoughtful development and upgrades. And how this is going to work along with future Bitcoin upgrades. Signal bits are pieces of data that miners can put into blocks to signal their vote to upgrade the protocol. If 90% of the blocks include the signal data during any of multiple two week periods, Taproot will be implemented in November. Each two week period in which the 90% threshold is not met, the counter resets and another attempt is made at the next mining difficulty adjustment, which is about every two weeks or 2016 blocks. But as mentioned, if 90% is not reached by the deadline of August 11th, then it's back to the drawing board for Bitcoin Taproot. And if you're wondering why there are so many red blocks currently when there is supposedly wide acceptance and desire for Taproot, Remember that miners need to make any necessary upgrades. So we need 1,815 blocks to be green in a two week period to signal readiness and then Bitcoin Taproot will go live in November. You can track this progress at taproot.watch. This is bullish for Bitcoin, by the way. More privacy, faster validation and better scalability, lower fees and the foundation for future transaction and smart contract applications. These changes won't be orders of magnitude in terms of impact, but they are incremental and important. And let this be a reminder that no, Bitcoin is not just digital gold. It's not just digital currency. It's nothing like the world has ever seen before and it's a radical departure from everything the world has seen. Simple metaphors like wallets and even the term Bitcoin itself are actually terrible because they lead people to think wallets hold coins and that there are actually coins in Bitcoin. And no, there are actually no coins with Bitcoin. But more on these topics later, so make sure to subscribe to stay up. Thank you guys for watching. Please like the video and a huge thank you to everybody on the next screen. I hope that you have a great day.